Okay, so just to clear my mind, I will be warning you guys just for once before I even begin. These shows aren't for the faint of heart. And if you have fear of blood and can't handle gore, then you should definitely switch to another video right now. Because these characters hold no punches and are ready to tear apart anyone into pieces as long as it serves their benefit. This is why today we will be talking about the top 10 anime characters that are psychotic and have a dark past. So before we begin, remember to subscribe if you haven't already, and press that bell icon to stay updated of all the new content we are creating. And beware of the following spoilers. Coming in at number 10, we have the Severing Crime Edge. This is one of the most ridiculous reasons for a plot in my opinion at least. This whole series was created because of a rumor in a psychopath with a hair fetish that can't stop himself even if he wanted to. The rumor in question is of the existence of a girl with magnificent long hair. As the news reached our main character, he began to drool just at the thought of cutting her hair. One thing led to another and he found himself with a family heirloom that, coincidentally enough, is a pair of scissors. Next thing he knows, he finds himself stuck in a grail war-like competition with his job being to protect the long-haired maiden so no one kills her. There is a lot of blood and voices of pure agony resonating throughout the series, so uh, you better get ready for some really dark shit. Coming in at number 9, we have Griseya no Kaijutsu. Ugh. This one takes Savage to a whole new level. Although it is a harem, the main character is no joke. I guess the Joker might have been right after all, and that it all takes to break a man is just one bad day. This one bad day came to Yuji after the death of his sister, and after his father attempted to rape his mother in front of him. The aftermath of the incident was a dead father and a mother that got raped and committed suicide. And a terrorist that adopts Yuji, sending him off to the military school. Crazy what life can bring you, huh? All that, and they subject him into numerous hardships and ordeals as well as injecting him with experimental drugs. Oh, and guess what? They give him a number instead of his name, and his number was 9029. Rescued from the hands of Heath Oslo, his scars are somewhat healed, gradually turning him into the man he is now in the series. Although he still retains his serious exterior, he is far away from being the irredeemable killing machine he once was. Don't get me wrong though, he is still ready to kill for those he cares for, without even batting an eye. Coming in at number 8, we have Angels of Death. This is one of the most grittiest, most suspenseful, and the most stressful horror series out there that will keep you tensed all throughout the series. The mystery and the horror of how the events unfold is marvelous on itself. The battles and the characters of Isaac, too, it's well written and well executed to a point. He had a very hard life as an orphan and was abused by his caretakers all the time. They even made him bury a dead body just cuz. But what really broke this kid and sent him off on a murder spree, life was the movie he so conveniently came upon and got inspired by the killer in it. The writer of this character held no punches, and he made him vile, merciless, cruel, heartless, lives only based on his instinct of survival, and a cherry on top with next to none education whatsoever. The real show, though, is all about the 13-year-old girl that has amnesia and doesn't have a clue for most of the series. And yeah, I said most on purpose. However, my lips are sealed shut. If you want to know, go find out for yourselves. Coming in at number 7, 91 Days. Revenge is a dish best served cold are words that Angelo Lagusa finds meaning in for his broken, torn apart life. One day, he is the normal son of a loving family. The next, he's an orphan that lost everyone thanks to the Vanetti family, a mafia organization. On that day, Angelo was the sole survivor left in that family since he was hiding in the closet. Seven years later, he receives an anonymous letter that urges him to return to Lawless and exact his long due revenge on the Venetis. He is as cunning as they come and meticulous at laying down his fail-proof plans. He takes his time to enjoy the moment and make sure that his enemies suffer the most. With planning and using his undeniable charisma and silver tongue skills, he is able to infiltrate the Vanetti family. And let's just say that's where the real fun begins. Coming in at number 6, we have Inuyashiki. This is what happens when a sociopath gains superpowers and becomes almost immortal. He kills everyone and everything in his sight, kid or adult. He doesn't differentiate, they're all the same to him. Pieces of meat and experimental live targets to test his powers on. 
After turning into an indestructible robot, he loses all empathy towards humans and decides to play God, killing people left and right for no reason whatsoever. In the most cruel and heartless ways, in one of the scenes he kills a child that was bathing with his father by leaving him to drown in his father's blood. If that isn't cruel and extreme, I, I don't know what is. Oh wait, maybe I do. The fact that he shot down a complete precinct and killed the people walking by as well as changing the direction of cars. You guys get the gist of it. There is a lot, and lot, of killing, and a body count that can rival that of the legendary Yagami Light. Coming in at number 5, we have Saga of Tanya the Evil. She gets things done when others can't. She is ruthless, cruel, beyond measure, vile. Oh, did I mention evil? It is in the name after all. Tanya is actually a reincarnated man that doesn't believe in the existence of God. And every second of his life, he is in a feud with that so-called God. Her powers are immense and unrivaled to say the least. Everyone on her side and on the opposing one fear her power and battle prowess. It is said that the moment you see the glint of her rifle, then it's already over for you. Coming in at number 4, we have Black Lagoon. They are a mafia after all and one of the most corrupt and crooked ones out there too. This main character knows nothing but the language of violence and causing pain to others. There is no way to reason with her. She knows no such language. All she ever knows is how to kill in the most gruesome ways and hide the body. Sometimes she wouldn't even bother to hide it. She is so messed up, she even shot the main protagonist once and almost killed him. The point here is, don't even think you can reason with a monster like her, or it will be your funeral. Coming in at number 3, we have Terror and Resonance. The moment you find a character that uses a number instead of a name, you know something is deeply wrong with them. And by wrong, I mean they are anti-hero terrorists that escaped from a facility for gifted children that treated them cruelly and drugged them and did inhumane tests on them. That kind of wrong. And with such a fucked up past, you wouldn't expect them to grow up into some kind of upstanding citizens now, would you? Instead, they grew up into the terrorists that kind of destroyed half of Tokyo single-handedly, all while having the cops on a wild goose chase. The duo is nothing short of genius. It's just a shame that they didn't use their intellect for good. Coming in at number 2, we have Code Geass. Well, when it comes to death counts, I don't think anyone here beats Lelouch on this list. Don't get me wrong, he is no monster or psychopath. He is just a genius that sees others as pawns on the chessboard, as lesser beings for him to toy with and do as he wishes to them. And what better way to do so than by using his Geass ability. This ability was literally tailored for him as someone as smart as him, and manipulative as he, as he has something or some kind of power to suit his style or warfare. You see, he never dirtied his hands personally, oh no, he is above that. He prefers to use his militia army to his ends, and manipulate everyone around him to do his bidding. How far did he go? Oh, nothing important, he just blew up an atomic bomb in the city, wiping it off the map, and many other things on par with that. However, I won't say anything about them for now. The Code Geass series is made up of two seasons and many more movies, so you have a lot of stuff to fill up on in the meantime. So you guys have a lot of filler. Better start now. And coming in at number one, Monster. Speaking of monsters, this person is as vile and evil and monstrous as they come. Who said monsters need to look ugly and gruesome? They can look charming and collected, just as this main character, and still be assholes and sick psychopaths. Rotten to the freaking core, to the point you wonder what the fuck happened to him to end up this way. Well, it is true that his past was a dark and sad one, but the reality is that after all that his sister went through, the suffering, the hardships he faced, and the sadness and sorrow, he convinced himself that he was the one that fell victim to them. And something in his mind just cracked and shattered. If you're wondering what the reason is, he is smart and manipulative, yes, but he has no reason to be the way he is. Some might even believe that he enjoys watching others suffer and squirm, especially for their lives. Even the people that done him no wrong in their lives, he finds joy in murdering them with cold blood and leading them to their deaths, using the most manipulative methods and schemes. Hell, not even his underlings are safe from his deceit and manipulation, leading most of them to their inevitable deaths. And with this we conclude our video. If you enjoyed this list, I want you to smash that thumbs up button and if you haven't already subscribed yet, be sure to subscribe and press that bell icon to keep you notified of all our latest and new videos. Also. Comment down below on the anime you liked the most on this list, and if you are planning to watch any of them. And if you have any suggestions, be sure to place them down in the comments below. And as for now, I'll catch you later. See you in the next one.